this is about the Judas spirit that was released into the churches in the 1990s. And how I know this is uh, I felt it. I felt it released on the power in the whole church. It was when I saw the two angels fighting for the pulpit. And I had given this testimony before. I don't know if I've given it uh, with the uh, with uh, with these videos that I'm doing now, but I had seen two angels that were fighting for the pulpit. And in the struggle, these two angels, they, uh, they strove by pushing and shoving. They did not strive with swords. They did not fight with anything. What they were trying to do was to knock the other one off their stand. So think of these two forces, one pushing the other this way, still on their, on their feet, and, and the other one pushing back this way, still on its feet. Two huge angels. I'm telling you, they were huge. And the power of it, was so tremendous a fight over the church that the true believing Christian almost lost their soul because the I saw myself sitting in a chair, but it really was a pew. And I had my hands tied behind my back. I had my mouth taped shut. I had the my feet were literally shackled to the chair legs. And and I sat there, and while I watched it, because I understood it because of my anointing, it I could feel the tremendous power of it over my own body, mind, and spirit to the point of death, which I told you before, I know exactly how that feels because my spirit had left my body so many times before, and even afterwards, and and I had, and I can give you doctor's reports. They can't believe I'm still alive. But as I'm going like this, I'm struggling with every atom of my being that I could do something. I don't know what I would have done. I didn't understand it yet, but I understand it now. And uh, the struggle was a tremendous battle on my body, mind, and spirit, and it almost killed me. But this was when, after this struggle, and each side was for the pulpit, the one side wanted the truth, and the other side wanted deception. And they were struggling for complete control back and forth this way for the pulpit. Up until that time, and still to that time, which is in the 1990s that this happened, Nobody had the truth. God had not decided to really release the truth until uh, until a few few years later, and even then he didn't release it. He hasn't. He's just now starting to release what he wants. And like you take prophets like Kim Clement, that was a tremendous release from God. So what I'm saying is, is and I don't, if you notice, I don't mention a whole lot of prophets. I don't. I know that man's body was attacked because he was for real. And he was nothing like me, but he, he was for real. And uh, so anyway, with this struggle, after this struggle upon the whole church itself was a release of a Judas spirit. And Judas spirit is unlike anything else. It was to influence people to, to go along for money, to, to go and betray God for money. Okay. 
And that's when the complete release of it, I don't know if it was the early 1990s or whatever, because some things uh, in timing, I don't remember. But I do remember this happening and I couldn't tell anybody. My mouth was bound. I could not speak this until God released me to speak it because it has like a timing on it. And so I couldn't even see the understanding of it until now, even though I wrote in my book about uh, Judas, about the son of perdition. And, and what this Judas spirit did, it has, like I said, you could have preachers that can deliver you what seems to be a powerful message, and they're not living the life at all. They're not doing what God wants at all. But there's this ability to shield what whatever it, it's there to keep you deceived. And it's there because if you don't love the truth, God sends strong delusion that pe people will believe a lie. Because if you don't believe God and you won't believe the truth, he doesn't want you anyway. And so he will send you things that will cause you to want to go the other direction. And the whole time, you will believe it's God, and it is God. In all honesty, it is God. Because the devil cannot tempt you away from God. He, it is <clears throat> the strong delusion of God. The devil can come and tempt you with the lust of your own heart. He can come and tempt you to do certain things. And you, because of rejecting the truth, you'll go along. And that is because there's not enough fear of God before your eyes. And I explained it before. The fear of God is something that is so deep inside of you that the moment that you pick up something that, that would be a sin, and, and the moment you think about it at that exact second, the fear of God comes upon you and, and you won't touch it. You won't touch it because you love him so much and you fear him and you think, oh no, even if it looks harmless, you won't touch it if you really love him. Believe me, you, if you really love him, you won't play. And if you do play, you can get out of it. You can pray and ask God. When you see evidence, because God will show you evidence of who you are, especially when you pray. And none of this is for condemnation. None of this is for de destruction. The only person that wants to destroy you is Satan. And the only thing he does is condemn you to make you feel and think that he has the power to take you to hell. But once you ask Jesus Christ into your life, you are sealed forever for God to always be there to come to you and persuade you into all truth. You are always sealed there. But that doesn't mean you will always choose all truth. See, because it's still by your choice. And if you take a look at the at how Satan is bound for a thousand years and then released, that means that that he's released to tempt people away who who never really wanted God to begin with. Listen to what I'm telling you. It's in you. You have to, you have to labor for it. You have to work for it. And you have to do that at any cost. And you have to make up your mind. You're going to do God's will. But don't ever be afraid. Once you work towards God, don't ever be afraid that you're not going to make it because that's a lie from hell. Don't ever be afraid that you can't make it or that you're going to be deceived or you're going to be confused because that's a lie too. Because once you start towards your journey of walking and talking with God the way you need to do, he's already there to help you every step of the way. Even if you fall and fail a million times, as long as you get back up and strive again, he'll be right there with you. Because he tells you at a good man will fall many times and get back up, but an evil man will fall and wallow in it. 
they will literally stay there. They won't go any further. And this is where the Bible calls the fearful and the unbelieving. It is because they are afraid of making a mistake, afraid of doing it. That is a different, it's not the fear of God. It's different. It's afraid of they're going to do something wrong. They're going, see, it's, so it's not the fear of God. The fear of God is, works, operates totally different than that. That's the fear of Satan. And that's the fear of you, yourself. You don't trust yourself. Well, you know, you need to trust God enough that he can help you trust yourself. But understand the different kinds of fear, where they come from. Do you know that your spirit can be so terrified when you come real close to doing something wrong with, as far as God is concerned, that you can lose your soul, that your spirit will be terrified and you'll feel it. And it won't be terrified the way the presence of God brings it, but it'll be terrified in the flesh and it'll be frightened and you won't even understand why. You won't understand why it's so frightened. It's because you are taking liberties and doing things that God does not want you to do. Because if you use these things to promote yourself, to prove that you are something. That's why I don't like people sending me long messages of the word because they want to reach other people. God is already reaching them in my channel. Get your own channel. Use the word in your own channel because the, God is not doing that on this channel. What he's doing is he is teaching you the deep things of God so that you may walk with God and and it's like a distraction. You take you, you take a book and you write it, and then you put quote and unquote this scripture. Then you write a little bit and you quote. Now all that does for the for the person who's trying to seek for the truth is sometimes it literally distracts them. So if you just give the message and put it in the footnotes where you can find the reference, that's totally different. And if you just give the message and people know the word, they will get it because they know the word. So, but the Judas spirit is unlike any other spirit. The Judas spirit will do exactly what he did. Number one, even the Antichrist, they will not know who they are until the time comes. That's what Judas, Judas knew did not know who and what he was until the time came and God ordered him, do what you must do. Go quickly and do what you must do. There are reasons why he told him and wanted him to go quickly because he was knew he had to endure a certain amount and he didn't want it prolonged. He wanted it done. He wanted, he wanted it completely done. So the son of perdition is the Judas spirit. And you know, the Antichrist, you have so many of them on the earth. They are the ones that take the things of God and use it to fight the things of God and use it to destroy is even worse. You can resist and fight the things of God and still not be guilty of the blaspheme of the Holy Spirit, of, of determining that Jesus is Satan, that the Holy Spirit is evil. This, this is totally different. You don't have to be afraid that you will ever blaspheme the Holy Spirit because if you're working towards God, what would you be afraid of? He's not going to lead you into that. You hear the, uh, the Our Father prayer, lead us not into temptation. He gave that prayer as an example that you, you ask God, and I always pray it for the church. I pray it for the church that God make it easy on his children that they can find the truth. Because I know that the devil is going to come along and take advantage. I'm not talking to the world. I am speaking to the Christian. And I'm not talking to the Christian, quote and unquote, that loves God so much that they would never do none of these things because they'll pick this up and they will go with it with God. I am talking to some of the people who are so disobedient, they haven't even begun to see it yet. 
and they have some work to do. They have what I call homework. They have some work to do with God to understand it. So knowing now that God released this in a church should give you a big clue why you have people who are so foolish that they are listening to every wind of doctrine. And I am telling you to follow and trust in church history, to follow and trust in past what you, th you think are past heroes of church history, to, to think of nothing else, but you have to go into the conformity of that. That separates you from having a real relationship with Jesus Christ. It tells you you can't go any other way but this way. Even a doctrine will take and put God in a box, that this is the only way you can find him. When Jesus Christ never taught that. Jesus Christ, when he went to God the Father and he said that uh, he, he lost only one, he sanctified them all with the truth and thy word is truth and even to those who believe on his name to them he gave the power to become the sons of god but he also said even those who believe me on their word but they believe jesus christ on their word so you can't separate it yes there are certain people and, and certain things in doctrine that work, but you cannot ever take that doctrine and use it as your guide to what God is all about because God is not, and the only doctrine God is in is the doctrine of Jesus Christ, that Jesus has come in the flesh. He resurrected from the dead and he lives inside of you when you invite him. And then he becomes part of that resurrection you, you will go through. He becomes the son of God in you. But does that mean that you're supposed to sit down and say, I am God? Uh-uh. Oh, no. Those that have taken on God in the sense of saying, well, now that we are, have everything done, we are God. For he says, we will be God's. Well, you know, you can make yourself a God. You can literally take on everything of God as though you have it all and, and, and everybody has to listen to you. Everybody has to obey you or they will pay. That's, that's not the way this is. That is not what I'm talking about. When I teach you these things, I am not teaching you so that you could build yourself up to become so like God that you take his place. Many pastors have taken his place. And because they had that ability to take his place, they don't even realize what a strong delusion that is. They haven't even begun to see what they need. Because they sit so high in authority that, that they do not even consider that they could be wrong or make a mistake. And that's the wrong place to be. There are things that I will say, and I'll even tell you my mistake. I'll tell you why well, I shouldn't have done that. I should, because I, it doesn't bother me to back up. If, if somebody comes into my life that God shows me is God and I need to back up, I've backed up. But if God comes into my life and he tells me, don't you back up to anybody because this one is doing this and I, I listen to him. I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going to listen to anybody. I'm going to listen to only him because that's how he trained me. So these are the deeper things of God that you do need to understand that the Judas spirit is the one that goes after money. It's the one that will betray Christ. Now understand, I told you before, political correctness began in the church before it, it was in full force in the politics. It began in the church that they made a decision they were going to, number one, never tell the truth. Because if they do, they would lose parishioners. They would lose people. They did not trust in God enough to know 
how much of the truth each person needs and gets. They did not trust in God enough it to be in the in the process of saving souls in spite of what their opinions and thoughts were. Because many children of God will automatically rebel against certain things and then they will go out into life and find out that what they thought was wrong and come back. They'll literally find out that what they did was wrong and come back. God always makes room for that. But understand the Judas spirit, the son of perdition, is a true antichrist. So, and it pours out in the church for whosoever will. But it also pours out into the world. And this is where you get traitors betrayers they'll follow you for a while they'll they'll say that they care about you they'll say that they know that god is with you for this reason or that and then suddenly they'll turn and they'll do their own thing because they were never really with you and they never really wanted the truth and i call them traitors traitor to their own selves. Like I told you, the people that went into Mexico and preached that God, because they were poor, God was going to give them half this country. They actually were telling them that God is going to take off of the children of God here and give to those that haven't even earned it, that don't know nothing about it, that don't even want to. And that's how you have saw many videos of little 15-year-old girls giving the third finger and saying, we're coming and we're taking your nation. We're going to do as we want. And you have people who are right now supporting immigration to a point that it's given them all the power because that is the lying Judas spirit for money to get votes for power that, that will do these things. So understand where you're going. Look at where your feet, your, the steps of your feet are going. Look at where you used to be and make sure that you're not picking none of that up. Make sure that you have, you're not partaker of the things that they are doing. Understand the winds of doctrine that sway, blow by the wind. Understand what they do and how and why they're doing it. But understand there is a trumpet that's going to be sounded. And the blast of that trumpet is going to override everything. Because God has a time that he is a, he'll, he'll time release things. And God has a time coming. And you must be at the right place at the right time doing the right thing. You must be where you need to be with God. And that is what this is all about. So when you strive towards God, he doesn't want you striving towards him in fear. He wants you striving towards him in trust. He wants to know that even though he was revealed this wrong to you, that you trust him, that he told it to you so you could get rid of it, so that you could trust in him to lift it off of you. And every one of you have the power before God to go before him and say, Lord, just like I did, these things will take me to hell, save me from hell. And the grace of God will grant you the power to do what you need to do, to think the way you need to think, to believe the way you need to believe. This has nothing to do with church. This has nothing to do with other preachers. This has all to do with your relationship with God. In spite of the fact that doctrines out there tell you that a woman can't have this. That is insane. That puts God in a box and, and makes him a respecter of person. They don't see that. They don't see that you're a human being, just like Adam and Eve. You're a human being. One may have been made out of the other, but you're still both a human being. And you both have a, a relationship with God. You both have it gets restored through Jesus Christ, the walk and talk with God. Gets restored from what was taken away from this original sin. So now, by the grace and power of God, it is taken away.
and you have the power to see never to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That means decide for yourself what is good and evil. Now, if you, if you, uh, decide on things and, and God tells you to weigh in the weightier matters, he, he doesn't teach you to, like, if fashion is, you have long hair. And, and long hair is a fashion. There are times in, in, in the old ages where men had long hair. And there were times where they didn't. So the fashion is that if you have, you know, long hair and you cut it, then, oh, you're not of God because you cut it. And you've got to have it real long. So, and I've seen women go to the altar that have hair in buns, real long hair, and they're, and they're like this covered up and covered up to here and they're they're covered up to their ankles but they're still sinning and cheating on their husbands cheating on god they are still a betrayer of jesus christ they are still doing the same sins because it's not in what you wear it's not in what you don't wear salvation doesn't come like that of course like for myself, I made a decision. I don't like wearing uh, jewelry. I never did. Uh, I don't like wearing uh, makeup. I feel it feels so much better natural. I like to be me. And if you like me, that's fine. If you don't, I'm not. Don't want you liking my looks. I I don't care if my hair is in place and I'm neat and I'm clean. And even if my hair gets messed up in the wind and, and I'm so busy, I, I don't seem to see it. That's different. I, you know, I, I'm not doing that on purpose. I'm not trying to impress you. I am just striving to do what is right before God. So understand this Judas spirit. It's also when it was released in the church, just like everything else just like political correctness, once it hit the church, and it always hits the church first, it hit the world. And the world politicians picked that all up, making it okay to lie, making it okay to do certain things. Well, this spirit hit into the church, and, and now it's into the world. And you have to understand, you people who are listening to other people from other nations, and they're promising you everything. If you give them ask access to this nation, you have to understand these people will see you as a traitor to your own nation, and they will never forget that. And so when they get a foothold into this nation and accomplish what they want, they're going to look at you and never trust you because you betrayed your own they will never trust you. Well, they'll lie to you. They say they will. They'll be with you up until they get the power. And after they get it, you're going to be one of the first people they get rid of. Because they know. They know if you can betray your own, even with a preacher, he can betray his own family. He can betray his own people. And if you will do that, you are capable of betraying them. So don't think you've earned anything and don't think you could sit back and everything is going to be fine. Like I had told people in the Senate, people in Congress, you people think it's politics as usual. You people think that it's God is dead, that God, because you haven't seen him move or do this, and because you think you've been able to manipulate him to make yourself uh, it, at least you think you manipulated him to m make yourself rich and to do this and to do that. You think you've got him in his, in your pocket. You think that he's going to continue to always give you breath and, and do your will. He has never, ever done your will. Whatever he has done, he has done for a purpose and a reason. So understand the God that you are playing with. The, the God it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. He is living and breathing, <clears throat> and you have not acknowledged that. What many of you have done is you have taken that for granted. You have taken it for granted that all you had to do was confess his name. All you had to do was this, and God was going to, because you've been taught that. 
You have not been taught how to die to self. You have not been taught the things that you must do. It hasn't come yet. <clears throat> and I said this a, a few years back, and I said the true gospel was never really preached. Because the true gospel is is all about letting Jesus completely in. That all about dying to self and letting him have his will and, and his way in your life. And they weren't preaching that. Oh, they touch on it some, some places. They weren't really preaching that. I didn't know who God was going to call to preach it when I said it. But I, it, God often has given me prophets, prophecies. So understand that if you are a traitor to the word of God, to the things of God, and you twist that to make it mean what you think it should mean, you're a traitor to God. So he's the one that's watching over all this. He's the one that's going to come and check things out. Not me, not not your neighbor, not your friend. Nobody is going to be able to save you. Nobody is going to be able to save your life when you need it. If you don't have enough of God right now and you don't acknowledge him for the little things uh, and don't acknowledge him that he's the one that gives you breath, he's the one that you have to trust in like a child trusts a parent. He said, come unto me as little children. Because he said, if you don't come as a little child, needing and depending upon me, you can't even see the kingdom of heaven. When you are so self-sufficient that you don't realize that he has the gospel deliberately to keep you from being so self-sufficient. He chose the foolishness of preaching where you would think that people are fools for acting like that, that people are stupid for acting like that. Even those that think and call holy rollers that have no understanding for the simple fact that when the power of God comes upon a physical body, the body cannot stand in the presence of God. That's why they fall over. Because they can't stand there. If there's a lot of flesh there, they will fall over. But if they're, and I'm not saying that the people that fall over are filled with flesh. Please don't twist that up. I am just saying that if you are in a physical body, if you've ever been in the presence of the glory of God, you cannot stand in his presence. It's impossible. So I hope that you take some of these understandings to heart. 